So come on back. We got a lot of cool info for you in this episode. This is Camp Kennedy. You know, so I promised everyone we'd get you back on the show. We're back here with Larry. Uh, we got a, a really cool crew. Lena, dedicated volunteers. We've got Captain Mike, who's full of a lot of stories. Uh, Captain and Troy. Then Captain Troy. We've got a couple of we got this a research Phoebe student, right here. Phoebe, and who else? Is Cameron. 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 So everybody's here. This is the crew. What about uh, me? Hello. Hey, Kate's here too. Oh and yeah, my hi. My wife is holding the camera. We got her out. So what do we got to do today? Uh, explain to everyone what we're up to. Uh, well, first of all, we're offshore of Key West, Florida. Okay. And we are out on these reefs that line the southern part of the continental shelf. All right. So cool. right out here, all of a sudden, we get into real deep water right offshore. But these are the reefs that kind of lie between the deep water and the islands. Yeah. These are coral reefs, and hawksbill turtles uh, love coral reefs. All right, cool. And that's exactly what we got. Why don't we show some of them what we got going on? What were these guys' story? Uh, why are they actually here? All right, well, uh, hawksbill turtles that we find here in Florida are very commonly uh, hatched in the beaches of Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. And as a hatchling, when this thing was just a little baby, it swam off into the Gulf of Mexico and had some trouble and washed up on the beaches of Texas no way. as a post-hatchling, or one that was not just born, but wasn't this big. It was about a few inches long. And we find that happening in South Florida as well. And so uh, this group of uh, 14 all together were stranded hatchlings at different times in different places in Texas, but ended up at the USGS, uh, US Geological Survey Lab in Galveston, where they were uh, rehabilitated and raised uh, for about a year. And so the best place that we can figure to take these uh, for release uh, would be here in South Florida, because the work that I've done so far on hawksbills in this area do match up with those that come out of Mexico. So we have a very good guess that the, the small juveniles that come from the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico have a good chance of getting here at some point. So we're gonna- It's almost that, like uh, a nursery or a growing is. ground. It, it's called developmental habitat. All right, very cool, yeah. man. Yeah. Now you guys should know that Larry is a freak about sea turtles, but this particular species is his passion. Uh, you know, this is what you wrote your thesis on, correct? Yeah, I am PhD? a hawksbill guy, yeah. All right, very cool. So how many animals do we have? Oh, we have 14. All right, so what what do we gotta do? What does everyone on the boat gotta do today to, to make this uh, a All successful right. release. Right, so what we're gonna do is we have, you may be able to see behind me here. Check uh, this this, um, it's hard to see through the water, but that's all coral reef right there, that brownish appearance in the water there. Uh, this water isn't very deep. Uh, right up there, you're talking about just three or four feet of water, all right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each of these turtles and we're gonna kind of swim them in. And we're gonna try to find a nice little spot on the reef there and let them go. All right, very cool. So I'll tell you what, let's get ourselves all geared up get these turtles released and we're gonna be bringing you some really cool underwater footage. We're gonna switch over to our GoPros. We'll see you in a little bit. Oh, you, you got a nice top there. I'm going, oh man, oh. All right, all right, darling, you hold that, I'll hold this and all will be right with the world. See ya. <laughs> Oops, sorry, Larry. I'm so graceful, killer bra. Anyhow, it's time for Kate and I to swim with the rest of the crew to the reef. And already, just it's amazing how beautiful things are here in the Keys. Actually, I haven't been to the Florida Keys since 1983. I was nine years old last time I was here and I definitely did not see views like this. Just an abundance of life and more importantly, we're here to do something amazing for this species of sea turtle. The Hawksbills is definitely Larry's favorite turtle, and I happen to have a very fondness for them as well. They're some of the most beautiful sea turtles on earth. Just look at that shell. Well, it's time for Laney to let go the first turtle, and let's see how he does. Oh yeah, a little discombobulated. And that's okay, remember what Larry said, they've been in a tub, traveling for 24 hours out of the water. And as we've learned in the past shows here at Camp Cannon, whether it's an aquatic or marine turtle, they really need to be in water. They need to also dump air and understand how much air to breathe in so they can dive properly. But that's why we're on hand, guys. All of us are sticking around with each turtle we let go to make sure that they're able to do it. Look out, Kate, he's coming for you. <laughs> now it was time for Cameron to let go of her turtle. Now she's been living here in the Keys her whole life, but this was her first time releasing a sea turtle. So it's a magical moment. And especially when we're helping the species survive, these little guys have a second chance at life. Remember, when they were post-hatchlings, they washed up on a beach in Texas. So they've been raised in captivity. This is the first time they're seeing a reef in so very long and also feeling the tides. 
So it's kind of normal that they're a little bit wonky, and that is certainly what they are. But don't worry, guys, because in just a little bit, you're going to see how acclimated they become. I really enjoy this stuff, guys. How about it? There's one of the first ones we let go. There goes Laney's turtle. It's already dove, and it's making its way for cover. Very important for a juvenile hawksbill to find cover. And I followed it down, and look at this. It's wedging itself into the coral reef, where it's now going to know that it's got safety. So that was pretty sick. What'd you think, Kate? I loved it. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it was awesome. So rad. So, um, all right, so you know what's fun, Larry, is you were talking about, and I mentioned this in just a video a few weeks ago, even with freshwater turtles, when they're being shipped or when they're out of the water for a while, they lose that buoyancy, right? So what's happening? What, you know, people are probably concerned about the turtles. They're like, what's going on? So why don't you explain to them sure. what's happening? Uh, <laughs> we are concerned sometimes too, there's no doubt. Well, these animals have been raised in captivity and they've never really seen a habitat this big before. And they've also been in, you know, traveling in bins, you know, <laughs> Tupperware bins right. for the last 24 hours. So they really have, you know, they're, they're not used to what's going on. So when we first put them in the water, they don't really know. They kind of stay at the surface. They don't seem to move their flippers quite properly. They're trying to just figure out their bearings. But we found within about, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah. that was that amazing. We came across one and it was swimming across the bottom. Woo. It was zipping around. It went right down and it found itself a little so, edge. So there's yeah. some, you know. So really uh, about maybe 10 minutes. I think we could That's put right on that good. one for acclimation. All right. So uh, now we've got uh, plenty more turtles to release. So we're going to, Captain Mike, where are we going? We're going to the next uh, site? We're going down to the uh, Eastern, Eastern Drive. Drive. All right. And you know what? Listen, check this out. So many of the young people who watch the channel want to know how to get involved with animals. Now you're, you're a boat captain and you're now running uh, all the, the boats here for the National Save the Sea Turtle Foundation, is that correct? That's correct. All right, so I mean, you don't necessarily have to be a biologist no. to love animals no. and to do good work for animals. So there's a lot of talents that need to come together to help these animals. So, all right, let's get moving. We'll right. get to the next set. Uh, all, right. all, right. all right, where were we just? Okay, so just to orient you, this is Key West. Yep. We just went right down here. Okay, that was our first location. To Rock Key, and we're gonna go to Eastern Rye Rocks. All right, so we're gonna cruise right here. Uh, how far do you reckon we'll get today? Where do you wanna get these animals? We're gonna release the rest of them right here. Okay, so out there. These are the Sambo Reefs. We have Middle Sambo, this is West Sambo, and this is East Sambo. All right, very cool. And as you guys can see right here, is, this is basically the continental shelf of North America. And then this. So all of a sudden, deep right water right here. All right. And shallow water, and then the islands themselves. And so, explain to me a little bit about their habitat. Sure, the, uh, quickly to clarify, hawksbills? Hawksbills, let's, let's talk about <laughs> hawksbills. Because <laughs> different turtles do different things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the hawksbill, uh, like other hard shell species, tends to start out as a little turtle in a pelagic ocean, living in floating mass of sargassum, which is with this golden appearance of seaweed. Okay. So, what we're doing is we're seeing where we think I found hawksbills in this particular habitat, and I have not found them in the other habitats. All right, so we're going to put them so. back where they belong. I'm so stoked I know Larry. It's been 15 years of friendship, and I've learned so much from him. He really is a brilliant man. And more importantly, I'm honored that Kate and I were able to come do this with him. What an amazing opportunity. And I'm really psyched on Kate. She really enjoyed herself. I love seeing her open up to new experiences, especially with animals. It's not necessarily how she was raised. This is something I've been into forever. And Kate is really coming into her own here and it was amazing to watch her release this little guy and just see the joy she had sharing it and just being part of this amazing, amazing, just great thing we're doing for conservation. This little guy was doing very well and I loved his chances. It didn't take very long for him to figure himself out and get his bearings. And right behind him, you can see our pal Phoebe. She was down here from Seattle, and that girl had a smile ear to ear the entire day. It was her first time working with sea turtles. And look at this. You see that little defensive? That's where they turn their shells towards anything that might be trying to attack them. And that was it. Kate's turtle started to make his descent to look for shelter. But keep an eye on this shell, and look at those sea fans and all the coral. You can really see how that shell from the top is an amazing bit of protection and camouflage. These guys will wedge themselves into the seabed or into the reef bed so that they can hide and sleep and other predators or predators will not be able to get at them. That shell is an amazing adaptation. Well, here I am trying to get this little guy to dive. 
He was having a little bit of a rougher time, but that's okay because he started to go down like the submersible reptile he is. I love watching these guys do this and I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. If you guys like sea turtles, please leave a comment below if you want to see more videos with Larry and what we can do for these animals. But this is just the magical moment when the animal is perfectly happy in its new environment, or rather, its proper environment. There is truly nothing that beats the feeling of getting hands-on with some conservation professionals. I have to hand it to Larry. He knows his stuff. We brought them to the proper reef and look at all the cover these animals are going to have. This is how you do it to ensure the animals have the best chance at survival because life in the sea is pretty tough. All right, so we're going to put some more turtles in the water. Western Sambo Reef. Uh, yeah. I sound smart, but I just heard him say it, so I'm lying. <laughs> well, I, don't know, uh, I don't know where I am. That's right. We've just gone a little bit uh, west of where we were before. All right, cool. And we were looking on the map before. There was sort of a line of reefs right. that had, you know, uh, patches in between. So it's like reef, and then you go a few miles, and then there's reef, and so on. So we've moved up uh, a little bit west, actually, uh, over to the Sambo Reef. So cool. we're going to do um, western, middle, and eastern Sambo, and put a few little box bills on each. All right, sounds good. So there's quite a bit more animals to release. I'm going to go ahead and get hands on one and release one, and then we're going to end this video here, but I can guarantee you that there's going to be uh, some happy hawks bills here. Absolutely. And if people want to help uh, your program, the Save the Sea Turtle Foundation, what can they do and yeah. where can they go? Sure, yeah. The National Save the Sea Turtle Foundation uh, does a lot of good work for sea turtles around the state and elsewhere. Uh, www.savetheseaturtle.org. All right. And we'll put a link in the description below. This is my buddy Larry, man. I, I, I'm really lucky that I bumped into this guy when I moved to Florida because... I get to do some pretty amazing things, so thanks to everybody on board. Thanks to Larry and Captain Mike and everyone volunteering. So go and check out that link. Help them out if you love sea turtles. And uh, yeah, we're getting hands on right now. Thank you. Larry really helped me out. Just knock one off the bucket list. Saving sea turtles and giving them a second chance today. So amazing. I just really wanted to make sure I gave him a shout out. And if you guys are on Instagram, go check him out at the Florida Hawksbill Project, or rather Florida Hawksbill Project, where you can see all the great work he's doing. All right, little guy, a little tap on his carapace. He's looking around kind of like, uh, this is a huge tank. But he turns around to me and we have a little interspecies communication going on, a little turtle telepathy, if you will. And he was telling me, thanks, I'm really psyched. So he turns away, I give a thumbs up, and it is just the most spectacular day. And what a way to end it, huh? You're in the beautiful warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Key West. You're working with an endangered species, giving them a second chance at survival, hanging out with some really great people, and most of all, sharing this experience with my wife. I really was proud of Kate. We even saw some sharks. Uh, that wasn't exactly something she planned on, but she handled it like a trooper. And if you guys want to see more of that footage, why don't you go on over to Patreon.com where you'll see some underwater sea turtle footage where you can't see anywhere else. And don't forget everybody, subscribe to the Camp Kennan Army for more original content. Today's journey and adventure was magnificent, and I can't say enough of thanks to everyone who was involved. What a good crew. From the captains, from the gals and below. Man, it's been an awesome day. And look, this little guy was getting more and more used to the water. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're just gonna let this little guy swim off into the sunset. Thanks everybody. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And let me know what you think of today's video in the comments below. See ya.